Let's build a full stack application in .NET. And by full stack, I simply mean we're going to have a client application, such as a WPF app, a Blazor app, heck, maybe even a React application, that's going to talk to a backend API, such as an ASP.NET Web API, or Azure HTTP functions. So the full stack application we're going to be building is Bug Porter, which I introduced previously in a planning video. So consider checking out the planning video. But on a high level, we're going to have a Bug Porter client application, such as a WPF app, where users can report bugs and interact with previously reported bugs by hitting the Bug Porter API, which will likely be an Azure Functions HTTP project. So the Bug Porter API will transform bugs reported from the Bug Porter client into GitHub issues and use the GitHub API in order to create those issues in a GitHub repository. And the Bug Porter API will leverage the GitHub API for other use cases as well. Finally, we're going to use Firebase authentication for, well, authentication. And we're also going to leverage some kind of SQL database for storage needs that I foresee in the future. So it is silly to build a bug reporting application as a standalone full stack application, but in the long run, I want to generalize this into some kind of reusable microservice or SDK that can seamlessly be integrated into any application. That being said, I did have some hesitations about using HTTP Azure functions as our backend API, specifically things like the dreaded cold starts and potentially maintainability if we had tons of functions to try and manage. But again, eventually want to generalize everything so that we can hook up to an ASP.NET web API or an HTTP Azure Functions API. So finally, let's go with the ease of development, deployment, and hosting, and roll with HTTP Azure Functions. Anyways, what are we waiting for? Let's get into development. So in the planning video, I created a Jira project where we can set up sprints and manage stories and tasks for our work. So in the planning video, I also completed this first step of setting up a GitHub repository for our project. So that's closed out. So let's move on to the next step, we're going to be focusing on our bug porter API. So we're going to create an Azure functions project. And as we can see by the sprint, by the end of this video, we'll have an Azure functions project with dependency injection set up and our first function stubbed out. So starting off, we just have a blank visual studio solution for bug porter. Now, before creating our Azure functions project, make sure you have the Azure development workload installed in visual studio. So go to tools, and go to Git Tools and Features, and make sure you have Azure Development checked off and installed. This will be required in order to create an Azure Functions project. With that installed, let's right-click our solution and add a new project. Let's search for Azure Functions and select Azure Functions. We're going to name our Azure function bugporter.api. We're going to target .NET 6, the latest version of .NET at the time. Our first function is going to be an HTTP trigger because we're building an HTTP API. We're just going to use the storage emulator in development and the authorization level for our function will be anonymous so that any client can hit our Azure function and not have to provide some kind of secret key. All right, all set up. Let's create. All right, project created. Let's do some organization and move our function into a functions folder. This functions folder will hold all the functions in our app. So looking at this first function that the project stubbed out, it's just a git endpoint that takes in a name query param and returns that in a string response. So on that note, let's run this up and test out this function. All right, app starts successfully. Let's grab the URL to our function so that we can test it. And we're going to use Postman to call our API. So Postman is a UI tool that we can use to call our API and test it out. If you don't have Postman, I'll leave a link to it in the description so that you can download it. But let's put in the URL to our function. Let's add that name query string so we can get it in the response and Let's call our function and boom, we get a 200 status code back from the function and the string response with our name. So with that, we've created our Azure functions project. Let's stage these changes in source control via Git. Let's commit these changes linking to our story ID. And finally, let's close out our story. So while we're still on the topic of setup, let's set up dependency injection. So dependency injection will allow the top of our application to configure and define all the services that we'll use throughout our application. So unlike ASP.NET, dependency injection is not set up out of the box for Azure functions. And we'll even have to install a few packages to set up dependency injection. So let's go ahead and manage new packages. And first we need Microsoft.Azure.Functions.Extensions. We'll also need Microsoft.Extensions.Dependency Injection, of course, which is what all .NET applications use in order to leverage the built-in 
Microsoft Dependency Injection. And that should be everything that we need. Next up, we're gonna have to create a startup class, which is gonna contain our dependency injection setup. This startup class will inherit from function startup, which is part of the Azure Functions extensions package that we just installed. And we're gonna override the configure method so that we can set up dependency injection. But at the moment, we have nothing to really inject. So let's create a class that we can test dependency injection with. So we'll just stub this out in our startup.cs for now. We'll call it hello world. It'll take in a logger through the constructor and we'll have a run method on this class that'll simply log hello world via our logger. So let's register this hello world class in dependency injection now. So in our configure method, we'll take the functions host builder, take our services, which contains the services that we register in dependency injection. And we'll simply add this as a singleton. So we'll simply have a single instance of this hello world object throughout our application. Now we just need to inject this hello world class somewhere in our application. So let's inject it into our test function, our function one. Right now this class is static, which means we can't have an object constructor on it. So let's make it not static. Let's make our run method also not static. And let's add a field for our hello world object. And let's generate a constructor for that. So we're gonna get that class injected through the constructor. And when we execute this function, Let's take that hello world class and call run. And one last important piece, if we want dependency injection to work, we need to tell Azure functions that we have this startup class as our function startup. So we can use this function startup assembly attribute and point it to the type of our bugporter.api startup class that we just created. And that contains our dependency injection setup. And the last thing we have to do for our hello world log to actually write is we need to configure the log level for our bug porter API namespace. So in our host.json under logging, let's add a log level entry. And for our bug porter.api namespace, we're gonna set the minimum log level that we actually write to information. So information logs and above, such as warning and error, will actually get logged and we'll be able to see them. So let's run our app and let's move over to Postman and execute our function, and we can see hello world written out to the console. So that means our hello world class was successfully injected into our function one, and we were able to call run on that injected hello world class. So dependency injection is working. We tested it out. Let's stage all these changes in git source control. Let's commit these changes, again, pointing to our Jira story, and let's close out our dependency injection story, which means lastly, let's take up our last story of stubbing out an HTTP function endpoint to report a bug. So finally getting into the bug porter domain. So first thing we're gonna do is rename function one to be the report bug function. So we'll change the class name and the function name that we specify in the function name attribute. To report a bug, this is gonna be a post request to the slash bugs route. And we want it to be a post request because it's gonna be a state changing operation where we're technically creating a bug. And let's just cut out all this boilerplate for now and do nothing in this function. And we'll return an okay result with no data returned to the client. Let's also remove this log parameter on our function because instead we're gonna get a logger injected through the constructor via dependency injection. And while we're here injecting this logger, Let's remove this hello world field and not get that injected because obviously that was for testing. We don't need that, but let's generate a constructor to pass in our logger and continuing with cleanup. We could also delete this hello world class that we used to test dependency injection because again, we don't need it. So let's run this and test out our new function endpoint. So this is a post request to slash API slash bugs with no query params and no body for now. And success, we get a 200 response and we can see in the logs that we did execute our function. So this is actually all I wanna do to stub out this function. We'll pick up from here next time, but let's stage these changes in Git. Let's commit these changes and let's close out our final story of the sprint. And hooray, we can complete what was a very small sprint, but we're at a good spot. We have our functions project set up we have scaffolded out dependency injection, so we won't have to deal with that in the future. We're ready to register and inject services throughout our application, and 
we've stubbed out our report bug function, which we'll pick up from next time. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to begin building your own Azure Functions project.